Welcome to Electra Online. Now we're going to take a look at something called Olber's Paradox. We've already seen in the previous videos that, was, that there's a lot of observational evidence that the universe appears to have started at some cataclysmic event that we call the Big Bang. Everything seems to point towards that, but it wasn't always the case that we understood those particular concepts. And so for hundreds of years, people always wonder whether or not the universe was infinite or not. And this concept here is actually very important in our understanding of whether or not there was a Big Bang. There were two big questions. One was, was the universe infinite or not? Did it go on forever or was there some end to the universe? That was a good question. Secondly is, is the universe constant or is it constantly changing? Now, that one was a hard one to detect back then because we didn't know. We didn't know the extent of the universe and whether or not galaxies were moving around, the universe was expanding. That was not a known quantity yet back then, but they could start thinking about the fact of whether or not the universe was infinite or not. And Olber, who lived in the 18th and 19th century, he came up with an ingenious way of looking at it. The way he looked at it was this. If the universe was infinite, then no matter which direction you would look, eventually your gaze would go directly to a star. It may be one that was close by or one that was far away, but if the universe is infinite, no matter where you looked, your eye would come upon the surface of a star, and so therefore the entire sky would be filled with stars, and the night sky would be as bright as the daytime. To understand that concept, we can take a look at it like this. So let's say that we're standing here on the Earth, and let's say that we have the sky divided into a number of concentric shells with some space in between. And let's say that we put the shells in certain distance away that, for example, we take the first shell and say that it's a billion light years away, then we have a second shell another billion light years away, so now that's two billion light years, in such a way that the second shell is twice as far away as the first shell. Now let's say that the distance from there to there is a billion light years and that the width of one of those shells is about a light year. Then we would count the number of stars that would appear in one of those shells a billion light years away. Now we look at a second shell two billion light years away and how many stars would be in that second shell. Well, it would have to de deal with the proportionality of how much volume is contained within those two shells. So, Delta V1 would be the volume of the first shell, and delta V2 would be the volume of the second shell. And how would you find the volume? Well, the volume would be equal to the surface area of the shell, and since it's kind of like a ball, a sphere, the surface area would be 4 pi r squared, and that the thickness would be d delta r, so the volume of the shell would be 4 pi r squared delta r. So for the first shell, the volume would be this, the second shell, the volume would be that, and so it would be r1 and r2. But since the volume is proportional to the distance squared, that would mean that there would be four times as many stars here as there would be over there because two squared is four. That means twice as far away, four times as many stars. So we can say that in here, there would be four times as many stars. Likewise, if we had a third shell that was three billion light years away that had a thickness of one light year, three times as far away, that would be nine times the volume, and therefore that would be nine times as many stars, and so forth. Now I also realize that the farther a star is, the dimmer the light becomes. And we knew and we understood at the time from physics that the intensity, the amount of light we would get from any one star would be proportional to one over the distance squared, which means if a star is twice as far away, the intensity would only be one quarter. You would only get one fourth as much light from each star, but there would be four times as many stars. So the fact that they're one fourth as dim is, is being uh, masked by the fact there would be four times as many stars, which means that the light you would get from this region of stars would be exactly the same as the amount of light you get from this region of stars. And the amount of light you get from the third concentric sphere that is one light year thick, that is now three billion light years away, you would get, you would have nine times as many stars. Each star would give you one ninth as much light. So again, you would get the same amount of light from that sphere and on and on and on. So what he's saying is that if the universe is infinite, we can go on forever. There would be so many concentric stars. Each one of them would give off exactly the same amount of light in totality as the shell before. And so they would slowly fill up the entire star, the entire sky with stars in such a way that if there's an infinite number of shells, the entire sky would be completely covered with stars 
of course, not at the same distance, but at an infinite distance, you would have every single spot in the sky covered, and the whole sky at night would be ablaze with light. Since that's not the case, Olber said, the universe is not infinite. So, the universe is not infinite, the universe is finite, because otherwise the night sky would be as bright as the day sky. And so that kind of settled it. People looked at that argument and said, that's a pretty darn good argument. We can't really argue against that one. And so therefore, from then on, they realized the universe was not infinite. Now, the second question is, was the universe changing? Because if the universe is not infinite and the universe is changing, it must have had a beginning. So, going on with that, we'll have to take a look at the next video and see what we can, how we can look at that concept there.